Chris here for Tenka Tech and welcome to the channel. And it's all about interacting with Arduino and how to read data from the serial monitor. So let's get started now. So you want to be able to convert the degrees Celsius into Fahrenheit like this? Stay tuned as first we have to think of what we have learned in our tutorials so far. We read values from potentiometers as well as done a few things with LEDs. But sometimes what you might need is to input numbers from a keyboard or a touchscreen into the Arduino. Let's say if you want to change how bright an LED is, or you might want to know how many times you wish to blink an LED, then you will need the user input. And today you can do that through the serial monitor. This allows the Arduino to do something based on what you told him to. Yes, the Arduino can listen to a command that he gets from the serial monitor. So to do that, we start and make a very simple program that we can use to send one character to the Arduino. Once we receive that character back, and this is to confirm that the Arduino we got it right, then we can use it to do something more interesting like controlling the LED or motor. Maybe something else. You can see here, I already type a simple sketch to save us some time. Note that in order to accomplish this, we need to do three things. And they are ask, wait, and read. Or ah, for sure. So let's start with ask. We want to show our question in the serial monitor. We do this almost the same way as we declare our integer. The things to know is to do that. And here, our answer is by using the string command with a capital S formatted like so. This is instead of what we saw until today using the integer. We do that when we use a sentence. You can also notice that the color has changed and is the same now, green. Then we call our variable MSG for message and not to confuse with the monoglutamate sodium or other acronyms, okay? This message will be sent to the screen to ask the user. You can put whatever you wish here, but for today, we will say, please enter your number. Not the formatting here, it is in quote, and at the end, of course, we put the semicolons. Now, out of the three things, how many of those we have done? So far, we have asked. So, one. Then we have in the void setup the serial begin, and this will allow us to communicate with the Arduino, with the 9600 for the communication. And this mode rate is just an indication of the speed or bits per second the Arduino speaks to our computer. And yes, we can use other ones too. Just make sure they are both the same here and here. We now have to wait, but wait for what, you may ask. We know the computer is so fast. If we just ask and then read, it's going to be as read, just like that. And we didn't give the person enough time to input the answer in. Well, imagine if you ask grandpa to enter a number, it might take him five minutes because he is looking for his reading glasses, then look at the keyboard to find the correct button, and maybe by then he forgot what to do. So you say, okay, just add a delay of five minutes in there. Well, have you considered about my little nephew? Maybe all he needs is a second to do so. Sure, he could do that much faster than grandpa. That is why when you design something, you need to know who is it for and how it could be used. As some people could use this quickly, some others might input things slowly. As for us, the answer to how long should we wait is straightforward here, as we want to wait until the data from the serial port has been sent. So we are going to wait until we get something from the Arduino and that's what we will do with what we have under here inside this void loop. And this is our while loop here. But first, we display our message with the serial printer length, which is going to pass our message to the user. Back to our while loop now. We have serial.available is equal equal zero. Remember, for the conditional formatting here, we have to use two equal signs. If we just said while serial dot available equal zero only we will be writing a zero this means we will be making serial available equal to zero we don't want to do that here. but for more information you may wish to look my previous video which was understanding the if statement think it take 101 electronic basics anyway the available here is a serial class function that does check and wait to see if there is something we have sent, in our case, from the keyboard to the serial mm -hmm. monitor. But if we haven't sent anything, we will just keep looking and stay on this line and keep looking through until we get something sent from the user. In another world, 
While there is no data on the serial port, we should do absolutely nothing. That is why we don't put anything in here, as the purpose of this while loop is just to hang your program until the person enters data. Then, when the serial available is no longer empty or zero, if you prefer, then we will drop out of the while loop. And like this, from the three things, how many of those have we achieved? So far, we have asked and we are waiting now. So, okay. Once we will send something, it will read it into this variable here. We'll just assume for now that we are sending the result as an integer. This is to make things easy to explain. We do that with this serial read here, which is going to read what input was sent. Then we will echo this for troubleshooting using a serial print line. This will also act as a feedback to the user as well. Our Arduino is plugged and we can send this as we just want to test the serial functionality. We open the serial monitor, we input a 1 with a keyboard and press enter or press the send button here. We should get a 1 byte. Oh, uh, as you can see, we don't. But there is another problem. You can see we got two entries here and every time we do an input, we do two entries. This is most probably happening because you have activated without knowing the line ending in the serial monitor options. Here, to change that, here on the bottom of the window, if it's set NL or CR, set it back to no line ending. Also, wait, what? We have a 49? Oh, that's weird, but why? And if we input a 0, we get a 48? Huh? That's peculiar. Let's look into why we are not getting the same number back. Alright, the answer to our problem lies in the data types we expect versus the one we are using. And the simple fix for that is to look at the ASCII table. You can follow the link in the description down below for the table that look like that. Actually, ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It is a table that breaks down for you the different types of data and how they relate to each other. We can see from this chart that we are sending a char or a character of 0 or 1. And we call it char from now on. So we send a 0 or a 1 and you notice if you look over here, you can see that the decimal representation of 0 or 1 is 48 and 49. Exactly the number that we were getting. Now we know what our problem is. We are sending this 0 or 1 as an integer when in reality it is not an integer but a char that we are sending. We need to handle the conversion on the Arduino to print back the right output. A character or a char is a byte of data. It is different from an integer. No worry, it is very simple to fix this. From this ASCII table, we have the characters indexed and in red in this column are the characters themselves. The first sections are the non-printable like command with the LF here which stands for line forward and basically it is the enter key on our keyboard. Then here are some punctuation marks followed by digits, signs and letters. Now if we go to 48, this index will show you that it is equal to zero as we saw earlier. But have you noticed that the character of the digit here are successive 48, 49, 50, 51 and their numbers are consecutive to 0, 1, 2, 3. This means that if we subtract 48 from each number that we type into the Arduino, you can actually decipher the digit that the user intended to send, assuming you're only going to input integer from the computer, of course. There is actually two ways we can achieve this, and they are as follows. We send from the terminal a char value of 0, which adds a decimal value of 48. We just saw that. So we simply need to subtract the decimal value of 0, and this will convert into a char value. The reason why this fixes it is we are sending a char 0, not just a 0. So we put the 0 here in the single bracket, and you can see that the color has changed. That indicates it is of a character type in the Arduino programming environment. Remember, we look at the ASCII table and saw that 0 as a character is represented at 48 in decimal. So if we know that we are sending a 0 or a 9 through the terminal and we subtract the corresponding char value in decimal, this will subtract the correct number and return what the actual integer value is. So for example, if we send a 1 from the terminal which has a decimal value of 49, then we can subtract this decimal value of 0 which is 48 and we will get back a 1. Let's try this and see see if this fixes our problem. Perfect, that's more like it now. We are getting the correct number for that. Please note here that we press the send button, but you can also press enter from your keyboard. So we will close this and learn about the second way to convert this.
let me paste the sketch like that and if you remember a char is a byte of data and this byte applies only for a single character that's why we declare our byte here first this we store the data we receive from the Arduino and that's why it is left blank then we change our integer to our byte like so and we subtract our char equivalent by changing this zero here and removing the single bracket with the decimal value and that is 48 like so then we extended the feedback with this line here upload that to the Arduino and you can see it has the same effect now that this is out of the way the better method to change without looking at the ASCII table and this is valid for all the methods it is to use the pass command like so follow by in our case the integer notice that I use a capital I here if not you will see it will not work now no you can use other commands such as float I will leave a link for you in the comments down below you can read on may you wish so like so we added our pass and and it doesn't take any parameter now if you run that you'll see that it works too you also notice that it took some time in between when I press enter and the appearance of the number this is because pass end guesses when the input is done by waiting a predetermined timeout period and this period is a thousand milliseconds which is quite a lot so we can change that to get our answer faster by writing here in the voice setup the serial set timeout that set timeout here will have a number in milliseconds so how long should we wait and this is with this 9600 baud rate we know that each character takes about 1 millisecond to send. Let's give it an interval of 10 milliseconds. This should be quiet enough. Of course, if you are using a slower baud rate, you should increase this and vice versa. Let me show you just how it works. And you see, it appears almost instantly. But be careful here if you are using parsing, as it works also for letters. So it might give you a wrong answer if you are putting numbers only. We again manage the R. That needed to be done. <laughs> Feel free to use the method you wish anyway. But we will not stop here. No. So let's keep the code that we just did and modify it in a way to blink an LED. Until now, we defined how many times we wanted to blink the LED. But here, we don't want that. I want the user to select how many times he wants to blink it. For that, we change the question to the user to how many blinks do you want. And also, I will change the variable name and I will put it to user blink, like so. Now, what we need to get from the user is how many times he wishes the LED to blink. In order to do that, we need three things. So we ask with this serial println message and this will ask how many blinks do you want. Now, what do we do? We wait until the user answers the question with this user blink here. It is equal to the serial parse in that we are going to read from the serial monitor when the user input an answer. What else do we need to do now? We will, of course, print the answer, but we also have to blink the LED as well. We are going to do that with this kind of a loop here. I hope you remember my previous lesson. We know how many blinks the user is going to ask. So in that case, we create our for loop. But remember, we do need a loop counter. So up here, we create an integer named x. Like this, we can finish our x is equal 1 as we start at 1. And we keep looping as long as x is less than or equal to the user blink here. Then we need to do x equal x. And remember, this will increment x every time we are through by 1. What now, what do we have to do in this clause here? We want to blink the LED, of course. That is another variable up here with this integer called B time for blink time. It is equal to 500 milliseconds. And then how do we use this to blink our LED? Well, one blink is done with this digital right here on the LED pin. And that's another integer that we have here for our LED, which is hooked up to pin 2. Now we can do our digital right to the LED pin and turn it on or put it to I. Okay, we need another delay to set how long the blink time will be. And we do this with this digital right here. But this time, the LED pin will be turned off. We will put it to low. Then we have a delay with the blink time again. Like that, every time we are through the loop, it is going to turn the LED on. And wait, turn it off, wait. And then how many times will it do that? Well, this actually is the blink here. How do we get the data? Well, we ask, we wait, and we read. So let's compile this and open up the serial monitor and see what's happened. There, how many blinks do you want? Let's say five. And what is the Arduino going to do now? It's still waiting, but waiting for what or for whom? Well, it is waiting for you, or in that case, for me to send it. Because you remember, I haven't sent it yet. So nothing is happening. We will send this now. And one, two, three, four, five. 
The LED is barely blinking. We need to do some troubleshooting. Something is not working. But is it our program? What other thing could go wrong actually? Well, one thing that could go wrong, at the exception of us hooking up the circuit wrongly, it's a bad LED. So let's swap the LED and let's see what's happened. Okay, we put it in a new LED. So let's try it. This time, I will do two blinks. Huh? Still the same. We can't even see it. Maybe we didn't put it in the right direction. It's possible two times in a row, but it is inserted the correct way and all my connections are good. So if it's not the hardware, then you know what? It must be the software. So let's have a better look at it. And here in the voice setup, we forgot what? Yes, I heard you. <laughs> we forgot to set the pin modes. So we need a pin mode. And then what do we need? Of course, we need to set this LED pin as an output. If you guys catch that, I hope you were not screaming at me through the screen. But at least now, I'm sure you are paying attention. So let's test this. One, two, it worked. So now we know. Do not assume because you were able to upload the sketch that there was no mistake from me. Always double check. But wait, there's more. Because we're on the road this time, we won't use the LED. We are going to convert degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Let me know in the comment down below if you want me to explain the sketch. Otherwise, you can pause. Let's upload this and see how it works. Okay, so when you launch, we have the question here. Then I just need to input how many Fahrenheit do I want to convert? As you can see, I wanted to convert 22 degrees Fahrenheit and it gives me minus 5.56. Now, if I put 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it gives me 37.79. So here we are, with the user input, we can convert degree Fahrenheit into degree Celsius. That's is it for today. Thank you for watching the video. And just to let you know, I started the Patreon where, if you want, you can support me. And again, if you enjoy it, you know what to do. You can do your YouTube things, like, if you want to, subscribe, you may as well. Or you can also press the bell icon if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. However, if you do not like this video, simply leave a comment down below and tell me why it's so. I will try to for you guys. Stay safe and bye now!